everyone, Pastor Laura here. Welcome to my table for this week's Table Talk. I'm really excited to have, uh, for the last month, my fall centerpiece. So I thought I'd try and get that into the image this morning. Hopefully you're looking forward to a month of giving God thanks and sharing in gratitude as we approach Thanksgiving. This week we're wrapping up our discussion on the Apostles' Creed. Our scripture for today comes from Mark, the Gospel of Mark, the first chapter. The time has come, Jesus said. The kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe the good news. And the last line of the Apostles' Creed that we're looking at is the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. And as a reminder, that's tied into the I believe statement of I believe in the Holy Spirit. So it's also I believe in the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. There's a well-known hymn that says, when we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. And there's also a fairly well-known song by country music artist Kenny Chesney that said, everybody wants to go to heaven, but nobody wants to go now. <clears throat> I think both lyrics hold true. When we proclaim that we believe in forgiveness, resurrection, and everlasting life, we say it with joy. It fills us up with hope, it gives us courage, and it helps us through difficult days. When we proclaim these truths of our faith, we look forward to what is beyond and after this life and this world. At the same time, when we're enjoying the good gifts of God in this lifetime, we think to ourselves, I really want to go to heaven someday, but I don't want to go today. I want us to think a bit about heaven this week and really the kingdom of God. Jesus spends much of his ministry not talking about heaven, but rather about the kingdom of God. In fact, this past week in adult Sunday school class, we were looking at some parables about the kingdom of God. And when we were doing so, we tracked down a particular note that we saw listed in the study Bible we were using. The note says that the kingdom of God exists where God is and where God's will is done. I'm kind of paraphrasing there what I recall from the note. When we think about eternal life and about the kingdom of God, we often think about the sweet by and by after the death of our flesh or after the return of Jesus, whichever comes first. But have you ever thought about the fact <clears throat> that we've already begun to live in the kingdom of God? That we've already begun to live out our eternal lives? In our Bible verse for this week, Jesus is just beginning his ministry after being baptized and tempted. And he says to all those who will listen that the kingdom of God has come near, so they should repent and be baptized. With his living, dying, and resurrection, Jesus ushered in the kingdom of God. So when we put our faith and our trust in Jesus, we start to live as part of that kingdom of God right now. We don't do it perfectly. We still wrestle with temptation and sin and the fallenness of the world in which we live. We still wrestle with the fact that we are bound by mortal bodies and flesh and blood that are fallen flesh and blood. But we also are already invited to participate in God's kingdom of joy, peace, forgiveness, and love. The moment we choose to put our trust and our faith in Jesus, we begin living as part of God's kingdom now. We start to live our eternal lives right here. As we continue to trust in Jesus day by day and recognize the Holy Spirit within us, we live our lives not only as citizens of this world which is fallen, but also as citizens of God's perfect kingdom. Knowing that we are forgiven, that we are joint heirs with Christ, that comes from Romans 8.17 if you want to look it up, we live out of the abundance of God's love now. We get to share in the victory of Jesus' resurrection now. We live filled up with imperishable joy of Jesus and with the unsurpassed peace of the Holy Spirit. We walk around with the gift of the Holy Spirit and we are empowered to resist temptation, to overcome sin in the name of Jesus, and to live out that resurrection victory. And when we recognize this truth and live our eternal lives now, we help others who we encounter to experience the kingdom of God here and now. We help our children and spouses to know the goodness of God. We help friends who are hurting to know the peace of God. We help strangers who are wondering and wandering to meet the Holy Spirit who guides. We help those around us to experience the mighty love of our God and what it's like to live in a kingdom that's full of light and love. 
If we didn't start our kingdom living until Christ's return or our death, then there would be no need for evangelism and maybe even no need for the church. We would spend our mortal life simply waiting. But this is not what we do and it's not what we are told. We're told to wait and watch expectantly for the return of Christ. No one knows the day or the hour, but we're supposed to wait and to watch. And in our waiting, we're supposed to live here and now as members of the kingdom of God. I'm reminded of the story of Jesus' ascension. When Jesus ascends into heaven in the um, book of Acts, the disciples are standing looking heavenward where Jesus has gone. And angels come and stand beside them and ask them what they're doing just looking to heaven, that Jesus will come back the same way that he, that he went. Every time I read this story of Jesus' ascension, I'm reminded that we're not just supposed to sit around looking heavenward and waiting for the sweet by and by, but we're to participate in the kingdom of God and the work of God here and now. So this week, as you gather around your tables or you gather around your sofa or the tables of your friends that you're visiting with, I would encourage you to talk about the places and the ways that you experienced the kingdom of God each day and also the ways that you lived into the kingdom of God on that day. As we begin to think about and embrace the truth that we are kingdom dwellers now, we will certainly experience more of the kingdom of God and we will invite others to participate in the kingdom of God with us. I hope you enjoyed dwelling in the kingdom this week and I look forward to seeing you again around the table.